I am tired today. <laughs> Damn. I uh, just made a video, but then it, I don't know what happened to it. It like, went into the ether. Um, anyway, I was just talking about art and, of course, the music, and also about um, the, one of the main, one of the muses, I would say. I'm going to release a video which is highly controversial. I'm not sure, if, I mean, I don't think it's controversial, but I think it will be for a lot of people because it's got a lot of truth in it. Uh, about, um, I don't know, about narcissism, psychology, homosexuality. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's just what it is. And you have to watch it to see. Um, and anyway, I'm thinking a lot about interrelated concepts with, with that particular video, which is yet to be released. Um, but I had a major revelation, actually, in the last few days, and making the Marathi graffiti, which is sort of what I've um, just finished, actually, today, this morning, um, you know, is... Um, <laughs> it's, it's just so unbelievably simple. Uh, so, how to condense it? Still, it. Most of the time, when two men get together uh, in this culture, in this time, through the mediums that we use, internet apps, internet websites, or just in the park, or, or just in a club, right? <coughs> a lot of the time you don't really talk that much. In fact, I can see in a, in a perverse kind of way why a lot of um, gay men don't want to know each other's names, why they do want to just fornicate. They want to just fuck, but fornicate is the same thing, really. Um, there's no emotionality, there's very little emotionality, if none, uh, involved. Uh, it's a defence mechanism, of course, to allow them not to feel, uh, not to connect, because of course with that comes heartbreak, because of course of the, let's say, infrastructure of the identity itself, the sexuality itself. Mm pertains itself towards, um, you know, a sort of permissive uh, nymphomania, and, or a, a conditioned and environmentally endorsed one, rather. I don't, because I, I, I would say I don't think um, organically uh, that men are any different to women in this regard, uh, or heterosexuality in this regard, and that actually what most people want uh, is affection, connection, and ultimately, intimacy. Um, but we've created such a tormented and sordid reality where you have to uh, essentially fornicate against the void of extinction. Um, and your fornication is a sort of rebellion against dying, of course. Um, but it's not as true as, for example, making love, or uh, even sex, uh, which to are forms of, of course, they are forms of... Uh, Coitus, but they're much more involved, actually. I mean, making love, of course, is the top echelon. You really can't go higher. But it's also one which is in incredibly bound up with emotionality. It's because, of course, in when one is so close with someone, um, you, I mean, you don't even need to be making love for what I'm about to say to actually happen. Frighteningly, in a way, because people really think that they, they, they don't connect, they really think that they don't, they really think that they can have their cake and eat it too, I guess, right? Where they can just fuck and not feel. But you can't do that, because, like, your whole body, your whole mind is evolution, like, is evolved against this precept that you could go and meet someone and just fornicate and then it'd be over. You can do it under these circum certain auspices, such as don't know their name, they're just, you dehuman. You have to intrinsically dehumanise a sex object, surely enough, in order for it to not encode with any real emotionality. For you to fuck someone without feeling, you have to actually be fucking an object in your mind. Like, your mind has to transfer, like, has to reinterpret, um, or re perspective, reframe what this other person is to you, right? So I think that's just a critical component I figured out. Um... In the sense, again, like class, I knew it for a long time up here, 
I didn't know it for a long time here. And now that I know it's here, I can now fully articulate it. Um, the difference between knowing something, cerebrally knowing something um, in your brain, and actually knowing something viscerally or, or emotionally in your heart or your guts, very different, right? These are two very different ways of knowing something. And I think once you synthesize, once you know both, which a lot of the time doesn't seem to happen at once, you don't go bang and then bang and then together. I think it used to, when we used to live in a reality which was a lot more, let's say, close to the earth. Um, but now, no, now I think there is this profound disconnect. I mean, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be able to have this reality that we live in, this level of hyper consumerism, hyper technology, all the rest of it. I mean, intrinsically to have that, you need to fracture, you need to break uh, the fuck, I don't know, the human condition on some level. It's a hypothesis. I'm not sure. I'm not a psychologist. But, um, so yeah, so my, what I realized about uh, these men, myself, well, I really only can talk about it like this, but I know as a generalization, I'm probably not too far from the truth because I've heard it before from others, not just myself. Um, which is essentially that um, I connected with them. Like uh, the jaguar, the panther, of course. <laughs> um, the kind one. Um, th these men, anyway, these men. Um, Marathi Graffiti, um, Jasmine Boy, Little Sarah. Like all of these ones that I've made this, these albums about. I connected with them. I mean, why else would I make an album about them if I didn't feel as something deeper than just a fuck, right? Um, and <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. And in so doing, I figured out a lot about myself. This is how I've come to this revelation. This is how I've come to these ideas around the disconnection, etc. And other ones that you will see on this channel. Um, it's through the music, through through that pain. I had to go into myself and into my pain. My emotional pain, which I come from a background where I am highly cerebral. I, for most of my life, I was studying things which were highly uh, cerebral, uh, uh, highly linguistic, highly, you know, things which were not, you didn't feel them. Um, but now I know that actually you can't live a full life unless you integrate, or unless you feel, you, you can't live unless you feel. I mean, that's, you're otherwise you're just a robot, right? If you're just analytical, you're just existing. You're just a robot in a, in a, with flesh. You're a machine that speaks. But I think if you have uh, the ability to integrate that with your heart and your guts, your, you know, what's called the visceral or the instinctual or the intuitive, you become alive, actually. I mean, this year I felt so alive since I started making music. I've never felt... I, for a long time, felt like I was waiting to live. My whole life, actually, in a way, I was feeling like I was waiting to live. And then this year, it just, uh, you know, it uh, really hit me that, ah, you're alive. Cool. This is a roller coaster. I can see why people get crazy. I can see why people get addicted to substances. I can see like, you know, why why all these different maladaptions and behavior happen with individuals. Because yeah, it's like really intense. It's really intense. If you're living, it's intense. Like properly living, like feeling it. Uh, yeah, it's overwhelming half the time. Half the time overwhelming. Half the time exhausting. And it's also, but it's really really fun. I don't know at the same time. Like it's really fun. It's really. Um, you know, you really know that you're not dead, <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, so it's cool, I really, really enjoy it, but yeah, it's, it's super, wow, wow, you know, shit, I didn't know I had that emotion, or something like that, or I didn't know that that was the connection I should have made, you know, you feel like, I feel like quite uh, stupid and immature in many ways, because I, just until the age of 31, 32, that I've realized these, like, major life things in the space of the last seven months, you know, because of this just profound level of creativity and uh, prolific creativity and, and, and profound reflections, I guess, that come from that, right? Um, I don't know. That's what it seems to be for me. I mean, hopefully for you guys, whoever watches this also, if, if you can tap into that uh, vein inside yourself or whatever, uh, that spirit, um, turn your sea of darkness into an ocean of light. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the best thing you can do, I think, actually. It's like free therapy, but much more than just therapy. It's, it's, it's like a philosophy. It's something else. It changes you. It's like your own individual intimate philosophy, you know. But I realized that that's the thing is that, like, uh, with the panther, he was the first person ever 
who made love to me in my life, uh, rather than just fucked me. Um, and that's because I was actually vulnerable with him, you know, I really was vulnerable, and I was open to it, and he was a random stranger, I didn't really know him at all, but I felt uh, instinctually a connection. Um, same with the Jag, uh, Jaguar, um, the same with, uh, you know, Little Pharaoh, um, the same with uh, Jasmine Boy, like all these people again. Um, and I guess also because we had like conversations, like primarily most of our time was taken up with conversations, not fornications. You know, most of the things were that we were, we were talking, we were trying to understand each other as people, as human beings, I think. And uh, that was really beautiful. That was the thing which led to, I guess, in a way, you know, the tr- enough trust, uh, for me anyway, enough trust for me to be vulnerable. Actually, when I met uh, the, the panther, I was wearing this exact scarf. So I still have it, you know, I still have, like, these material remnants of, of that time. Just that, Like, I had perfumed, there's a line in this uh, song, one of the songs, where I perfumed this with patchouli oil. Um, I didn't actually, sorry, but it had exploded in my bag, and it had covered all this, because I had rolled this up, obviously, in my bag. And then I wore it, and it must have just had a very um, powerful, uh, that intoxicating perfume. Because I remember it falling off my shoulder, like it, it sort of fell off my shoulder. And he picked it up and said, wow, what is this scent that's so familiar? And I said, oh, I think it's patchouli. And then he said, um, yeah, it grows as a, in a pot at the back of my, I think it was his auntie or his mother's house. I'm not sure, I can't recall everything. <laughs> Just most of it. Um, and so, you know, it's like, it's weird things like this, but why do I remember that, right? Why? Yeah. Well, because it, because I was, at the end, um, that was, like, an important day in my life. Emotional, like, as an emotionally intelligent, um, progression, a uh, catalyst point. Um, I wouldn't be the person I am today if that didn't happen that day. Like, that's, that's fundamentally a thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the person doing this. I probably wouldn't, because I wouldn't be, have created music, presumably. I wouldn't have ever had the guts to actually do it, to actually do it. And I wouldn't have had that profound emotional deregulation that happened uh, and dysfunction that sort of happened. Not just because of the grief. Like, I, I went through a lot of grief uh, just before I... And I almost died myself. I think I said this before in a previous video. Before I met him. But it was sort of like that was a darkness that I had come out of and he was sort of the light. And it was just a false light, though, in a way. I mean, it wasn't false, but it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't the true light. It was just a mere spark in the darkness. Um... It was a glimmer, but it was all I needed, I realised. I didn't need a flaming inferno, I just needed a glimmer, I just needed like a spark to latch onto and go, oh, okay, if that spark, it's like how do you start a fire, right? They all start with sparks, no? Um, so perhaps it's like that, I don't know. I think so, because here we are, here I am, right? So, you know, and uh, so, yeah, and I, but I realised... At the flip side as well, with all of these boys, all of these men, is that, um, because they are frail and complex, like me, uh, I think I'm just more open about it, I'm just more honest about it, because I, I see, I think, I believe that I see reality as what it is, and it, it, I, I, part of that is probably the class thing, sure, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sort of confiscate around that. I think, I think, of course, because it's important. Um, it's categorical. Under capitalism, class is important. Okay, cool. So, if that's the case, then it's more important in sense, in some respect, in this sense anyway, sorry, um, that it's to do with socialization, the way in which we're brought up to behave, to expect, to want, how we perform desire, how we engage with people, interpersonal dynamics, are created from a class point of view, right, in many respects. It's, 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 it's subtextual, it's, sub, it's almost subliminal. You don't know that that is until you know, until you know. And I think that's a thing, right? Um, I'm just more open about it because of my class background and because of who I am as well, right? Uh, my own psychology is something which is created as a rebellion against my class, also. So it's it's a it's a it's an intersection of these things, as the kids say. It's a it's a conflation. It's it's a, it's a crossroads, whatever you want to call it. But my point is, yeah, that they were, they are just as fragile and as complex as me. It's just 
they don't exhibit their complex. They don't cut open themselves. And here's my, here's my guts for the world to see. Um, we have such panache as I do, which is probably for the best because you know it's it's very painful. It's very painful, and these people have you know bourgeois lives. They have different lives to mine. So there's also that time. They have more money, but they have less time. I have less. I have less money, but more time. This is the for a Faust, Faustian bargain you make, right? In life, actually, it's very distilled down. But that's really pretty much the bargain. So, my point about them being complex and frail as I am is also because I realised um, they would have experienced the same thing that I experienced. They just don't know how to articulate it in the same way. Or, perhaps upon the disconnect thing, they don't even have it integrated. They couldn't really integrate it. And so they just ignore it because it's like if something hurts you and you can't, um, you can't um, get rid of the pain, as it were, then you try to push it away, right? And if you can't push it away, you use something to numb you from the pain. Right? So I think all of them had uh, different things, right? Of course, as we all do. I think it was just that what people see in me as aloof or mad or eccentric or strange is not, actually. It's just that we live in a reality where what I am, which I think is relatively truthful, and I think more and more each day more connected with myself, is very um, strange. It's, it's very strange. Not to, uh, not not to be a machine that with her voice, but rather a living, a breathing person with warts and all and and nose hairs and you know is blind and I'm not trying to hide the fact that I'm these things I'm blind or mad or no I'm not I'm not mad anyway but you know what I mean like not so uh, normal what is described as or described as normal in the society I mean was this normal three hundred years ago. No, will it be normal in 300 years? I highly doubt it. We live in an aberration. You know, like, we really do. As a society, as a global society, and as the West, we live in an aberration. This is already starting to disintegrate on many levels, but that's a whole other video. So I know that I'm correct, because I know what I am is kind of almost primal in many ways. I'm just, I'm just trying to integrate this, which I was, bre you know, we are all raised uh, with a disconnect. Generally, people are raised with a disconnection. And I'm simply trying to reconnect, you know, and if through this medium I can, I don't know, somehow, somehow share that with you uh, through myself, you know, as an, ex as a, not an experiment, because I think what I am is eternal, but through um, my, my elucidations into it, my, 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 my talks about it, then perhaps it could um, help you too. I mean, that would be the most marvelous thing. I would, that that would be great. Why not for everyone involved? Um, it's like it's like a string of lights. You know, one light leads to another light, being illuminated. The next, the next, the next, and it multiplies itself in this way. Um, we could become a network rather than just nodes, as it were. And I think that that's really, I think that's really important, and I think that's worth doing in life, irrespective of whatever the fuck you do. Um, I think it's important to to reintegrate to in, to connect yourself actually it's not that way it's like in a way it's not even you're disconnected it's like you've never actually i mean you have been connected when you were a child you were connected with yourself i think you know who were you before the world told you who you had to be that is pretty much you connected right it's like you've been unplugged or something in a way and your whole life is just on this sort of script like you just follow the script you know like the code they just put a code into you like it's like a machine again or a computer but it's not you <laughs> this is not you though like you because you're still uh, something more you're something beyond uh, something so mechanical as as that sort of description and so and so are these guys and this is my point so are these guys and i realized that right and in that realization uh, you know it's that line from i think I, it's a roman playwright and he says like i am human and therefore nothing human is alien or foreign to me. And it's very true. It's very true. The more I research, the more I look into psychology, philosophy, whatever, the more music I make, uh, the more I realise these guys felt the same way. It's just their way of dealing with it was significantly different to my way of dealing with it. That's the difference. That's the, that's the sort of difference. But fund underneath the differentiation of behaviour or um, the effect of the cause is actually the same. You know, It's just, again, that I'm probably because of all these other things, much more uh, upfront and forthright about it. And because of my creativity, I'm able to 
rechannel, refocalize this, and I think fairly well communicate it to anyone that listens to it if they listen to it. You know, <laughs> can't communicate something if you ain't listening. So that's 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 the point. But yeah, and I I just think to myself. I'm sure that they felt these little heart heartbreaks as well, you know. And that's the thing. I really wish I could reach out to them and say, "Hey, like me too." But you know, me too. And that's okay. That's life. And it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to feel. I don't know the the pain of that. You know, like because you feel it, you shoulder it, you start to process it, you accept it, and then you just let it go. That's 